recording now. Okay. Um, pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, extended by Chapter 22 of the Acts of 2022, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access this meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. See instructions below. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every director will be made to, every director, every effort, I guess, will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. Um, so we are, I will call the um, committee to order and then I guess I will open up the um, public hearing. Is that correct, Athena? Yes. So I will uh, call the roll. Um, Anika Lopes, can you hear and- I'm here, can I okay. hear you? Anna Devlin Gauthier? Present. Okay, Andy Steinberg? Present. And Shalini Balmilne? Present. And Dorothy Pam here. Okay, we are here. And I will note that we have town manager Paul Bachelman and um, Superintendent Guilford Mooring and um, Jennifer LaFontaine, LaFountain, actually. And Jennifer, can you give, give your title again? I am the treasurer collector. Say that again, please. I am the treasurer collector. Treasurer collector, and we are talking about rates. Okay, and we have Guilford Mooring. So we're all here. And I guess I just um, opened the public hearing and um, it's, um, are the attendees, are there any attendees, Athena? I haven't checked out my little list. Yes, there are. Okay, all right. So um, public hearing is on proposed parking regulations proposed by the town as follows. To establish new parking regulations for the spaces that are created on North Pleasant Street, between McClellan Street and Triangle Street, other than designated handicapped spaces, be metered and charged at the rate of 50 cents per hour from 8 a.m. until 8 p.m., and that these regulations take effect upon completion of construction of the parking spaces. The town council may want to consider designating some of the spaces as permit parking spaces to accommodate residents in the area. Now, that is what was on the public announcement of the meeting, but a, a new um, I guess you'd say wording uh, has been sent to us uh, today. Um, is it appropriate for that to be read aloud? Um, okay. Uh, let's see if I can find the darn thing. Um, would, would you like me to present it, Dorothy? Would yes, that be easy? Please present it, please. I, okay, I, thank I you. I have it marked up in my comments. Okay. Which, whichever you prefer, I can do it or you can okay. do it. Why don't you read it? Why don't you okay. read it? So uh, I'll just do a, a short presentation, then you can open up the floor for public comment. Right. And um, so the, as you know, with the creation of Kendrick Park and making the council approve the uh, making uh, North Pleasant Street one way, uh, we had to address the parking situation. So this is the recommendation on the parking. And we advertised sort of the most aggressive parking um, recommendation, which was to make everything metered. And then we did say in the, in the, in the notice that we, there might be some recommendation for um, making some of it resident parking only. So the, after reviewing the situation, we've sort of documented the number of spaces that are there. What we are recommending, or I'm recommending, is that one parking space be reserved for handicapped parking and designated for, designed for to accommodate a van. Two parking spaces be designated for handicapped parking. And I do wanna note that people who have a handicapped pla placard can park in any parking space and they do not have to pay for it. So it doesn't require them to be in these spaces. You know, if there's five places, people with handicapped placards, they can park anywhere they want. These ones are designed and reserved at special locations just for handicapped parking. Uh, we have seven back-end parking spacers that we would re that I recommend that they be for metered at 50 cents an hour with a four-hour parking limit enforced from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. And that we have 20 back-end parking spaces reserved for permit parking and enforced from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., which is our normal time frame for that. And then there's three additional parallel parking spaces um, at the end of North Pleasant Street that I would recommend that we have them metered and available at 50 cents an hour for a four hour limit and enforced from 8 p.m. to 6 p.m. and that they none of these things go into a place 
take into effect until the parking is constructed. And I put that out there knowing that there will be some discussion and, you know, Guilford and Jennifer may have different opinions on this and, and you may, the council members may and the public, this is really to listen to the public about it. And just for context, I think it's important to note that um, what's there now is um, uh, there are 22 permit parking spaces and seven metered spaces. So it's basically the same number of spaces and the same um, distribution of spaces between metered and um, uh, resident permit parking or permit parking, I should say. Okay, so that is the uh, presentation and this uh, memo is in the packet if people want to look at it and it does. I do appreciate the fact that you did include the previous configuration, making it easier to see that in fact, the uh, I guess the only thing that has changed is that there are three handicapped accessible parking spaces. Otherwise it's 10 metered and 20 um, permit. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. So um, have anybody, is anybody who is here from the public want to speak? And if so, please raise your hand. Okay. I see uh, Ken Rosenthal, please uh, state your name and address and proceed. Thank you, Dorothy. My name is Ken Rosenthal. I live at 53 Sunset Avenue. And uh, I, I want to compliment the town on the great success of the wonderful playground at Kendrick Park. I'm a grandfather of three children, seven years old and younger. They love it there. We go there and we park illegally. And we do that because unfortunately, there are so many permanent parking spaces and so few other opportunities and the time that we go times that we go there because the children always seem to go at the same time from every family the place is full of people having a wonderful time now that you're going to change the road and make it i hope safer because it's in one direction i think that it's very important that you have more casual parking spaces for people like us who come just for an hour or two to play there I know that that means that there should be fewer than permit than the present number of permit parking, and you've done that. You've reduced it by two. I think you need to reduce it by even more. Uh, I'm not sure who the permit parking people are who use that space. I suspect they may be people who live in apartment houses across the street. Uh, I, 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 I say with some regret that uh, we permitted those houses to be built without parking spaces, and so the people there have moved into other places in town. But this, is, this place in particular attracts families with small children, children playing in the playground. And we need to make it easy for people like me and my family to park there with our small children and make it easy for us not to be violating the law. Um, so thank you for listening to me. I hope you will make more of those spaces uh, available for casual parkers like us, even at the risk of taking some of those permit parking spaces away. I appreciate that very much. Now, I want to make one other comment, and this is a general one about back-end parking. I'm very worried about the proliferation of back-end parking spaces on roads in which there is moving traffic. Back-end parking spaces make sense where there is no through traffic, like in parking lots. I think the spaces that we are placing near intersections are accidents waiting to happen because, because of the shape of the back end parking spaces, the cars that are backing in are farther out into traffic. I worry about that very much. Not so much at this location, but more at the beginning of Main Street and at the beginning of North Pleasant Street and a, a little bit here too. So I just hope you'll consider that too and think of more of par parallel parking in places where there is is traffic, moving traffic, especially traffic that is escalating in speed as they come from a corner. Thank you again for thank, listening. Thank you, Ken. Um, I'd like to ask, ask him a very quick question. Um, one of the uh, issues that we're gonna discuss is the um, timing of the metered spaces. Um, I'd heard two hours mentioned, and I believe this proposal says four hours. Uh, I have not taken young children to the park. Um, so I'm curious to know what is, in your experience with the young children, the the average time you would your park visit would take place is it is four hours a good time or is two hours closer? 
in, in my experience with my family, two hours was perfectly adequate for these small children. Thank you. Uh, thank you, because that, that is something that some of us have been discussing. Okay, I see that Kimberly Tremblay has her hand up. Um, Kimberly, please uh, introduce yourself, give your address. Hi. Uh, and then, hi. Um, my name is Kim Tremblay and I live on 32 Cosby and I am an avid cyclist and I cycle to work past on that on North Pleasant every every day um, to UMass and um, I applaud the um, idea of changing the parking to the opposite side it will greatly improve the sight lines and I can tell you that um, you know parking on the housing side of that street is um, it obscures the view of cars entering <clears throat> the street and and also is hard for um, cyclists going by because you can't see who's coming out of those streets so, mm -hmm. so that I think that's really great and um, I whoever I, I concur with my neighbor on sunset about um, who's parking there and I can tell you um, that it is full the the um, resident parking is is full during the semester and particularly when UMass is in session so I have a feeling it's mainly um, students who are parking there as a way to um you know avoid parking in the lots that's my just personal observation from riding there every single day <laughs> on the weekends and on during the week um, and so I would concur with my neighbor that um, that there's I, I would skew the ratio of parking like the permit parking to the and and also I see kids there all the time which is really lovely um, and it's really great um, but I would skew the ratio of I if it were me I would skew the ratio of um, metered parking to um resident you know the permit parking more toward the um toward the metered parking because those and you know now i see i regularly see as a cyclist people <clears throat> stopping on the park side to unload and off and and take in children so i think it's essential that we you know make that parking on the <clears throat> on the park side of the street mm -hmm. and um also to my um, neighbors um, worry about back in parking. I mean, one of the great things about back in parking on that street would be that the doors would open toward the street side. So hence shuttling the children towards the park and not into the street. So I really like the idea of back in parking, um, uh, metered parking there for that reason. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate your observations. Um, is there anyone else who is uh, here? Okay. Um, Tracy Zafian, please introduce yourself and give your address. Tracy, are you all set to go? Yeah, no, I'm sorry. I just had to mute. Um, I'm Tracy Zafian. I'm the chairperson of the Transportation Advisory Committee. And Kim, who just spoke, is also on the TAC. And I had a few comments on the proposal. Um, one of the things is I noticed in the new memo that came out this week from the town manager that in the background section, it mentioned that the Transportation Advisory Committee and Disability Access Advisory Committee are providing recommendations for the council as it reviews the plans on the parking, both the concept plan from January 22nd and the more recent memos. Um, I did wanna just comment on that, that so the TAC did weigh in on the initial recommendations that we made last summer and that were adopted by the council in December in terms of the overall concepts for North Pleasant Street. But in terms of the more recent plans and the details on the parking, the TAC has been told that until it has been referred to us that we do not have any official role or um, that we should not be providing feedback until it's referred to the TAC. So, um, Kim, you know, was speaking, and just as I am speaking, just as ourselves, um, even though we are on the TAC, but, you know, just as people who've been thinking about this issue, because the TAC has not taken an official position yet. Um, second, I, I, you know, I did, I share um, Dorothy's comments about 
the idea of whether it should be four hour parking or two hour parking with the meters. I mean, I noticed if I look at the current parking map that along North Pleasant Street heading into town, um, those meters are two hour parking, not four hour parking. I do think it's helpful at the park area to have turnover of the parking, um, particularly at times when the when the park is in high use and the playground is high use. I do have a few concerns, um, both about, I mean, this is more general, not just for this area, but just about our parking in general is um, like one thing with the permit parking, and I know that the council recently reviewed the parking permit regulations, but that the parking permit is only enforced um, from September to May, and it's only Monday through Friday. So I could conceive, and this would be like completely allowed if we continue to have all these parking permit spaces, that those parking permit spaces could be occupied by the same vehicles um, all weekend long, you know, starting at 5 p.m. on Friday, like through Monday. So they would not be available to the public, either public visiting the park or public visiting downtown. Um, and I also have similar concerns about some of the metered parking, right, because we don't enforce it on Sundays. And so because the parking officers work Monday through Saturday. So I think about it here and I also think about it, for example, with the Spring Street lot. And I, I've noticed just as somebody who walks around downtown a lot that those spaces are often full first thing on Sunday morning. So again, um, Sundays are a great time to visit the park, but those spaces could be occupied, not by people even using the park, but by other people who live downtown and wanna use the spaces continually. I don't really have an answer for that, you know, particularly on the issue with Sunday, but it's just a concern I'm throwing out. Um, the other thing I wanted to just bring up is just, I mean, I really do hope, and I, I had commented to the TSO about this previously, is that even though the improvements on this section of North Pleasant Street are being delayed, you know, we don't have any funding for it, and we don't, um, and I know that the DPW's work plan for this construction season is full, I, I really do hope that there's some way to start to do a little bit of traffic calming in this area. Um, there is already a lot of use of the park, and um, and I know that at one of the council meetings where this came up that some councilors had suggested things like even um, moving the parking to the other side, to the park side of the, the east side of North Pleasant Street, just to get rid of the issues with the sight lines there. That is really a safety concern. Um, and also perhaps like making it a one-way street. I, I'm not sure how much is possible, but I would hope that we could start to sort of go in that direction. And I was in the park today and there is just so much cut through traffic going southbound and stuff. And just really to convince people that this is a neighborhood street, it is not a cut through street. And this is where the park is and we want the traffic to be as safe as possible. I mean, I do see, I have been going on that street a lot myself just to observe what's going on. And I do see a lot of times like kids crossing the street or families with small kids crossing the street. And, you know, Kim had just mentioned about how sometimes families are unloading their kids on the park side, you know, just for safety. And so yep. like to the extent that anything is possible, I think that would be a great idea. Um, and just one yep. last point on the back end parking. Um, I think this is actually a good location for back end parking overall, because again, we don't want this to be a cut through street. We don't want this to be a heavily trafficked street. We want to discourage people from coming on the street, except for if you're going to the park or if you live on that on the west side. Um, so I do see a lot of traffic calming value in that. And I do share some of the concerns that were expressed about back end parking in other parts of town where there's a lot more complicated traffic and there's a lot through traffic. So thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, okay, I see a hand from Jennifer Tao. Please introduce yourself and give your address. Oh, um, Jennifer Tao, 259 Lincoln Avenue, and I'm speaking as a resident, um, you know, a lot concurring with like what Ken said, um, it, that Kendrick Park Playground's just a few blocks from where I live. I walk by it like every day, drive by several times a day. And as everyone said, it is from the day it opened, it was, a destination that people love going to. So it's, and I'm hoping that that will bring, you know, more families downtown and then they'll go have ice cream or they'll go out to eat. So it's really, it's been wonderful for kind of the surrounding neighborhood. And I really do think it's bringing families from other parts of Amherst downtown. So it's, it's mm -hmm. just been a wonderful addition to the town and to our immediate neighborhood. 
Um, so I would just, um, you know, concur in that I would hope there'd be more spaces. We, you know, we could have the maximum number of spaces possible for families coming to the park. And I just wanted to say that um, because I've been, you know, trying to pay extra attention to it, you know, since this was coming on the agenda that um, the, it's mostly like small apartment buildings or houses that are, you know, there, there's on the west side of the park, you know, mm -hmm. there's buildings and then there's little buildings behind them. Um, th there's a lot of people living there, but there's a lot of parking spaces. It seems like most of the residents on the west side, I don't know if they have spaces for all their guests, but there's a lot of off street parking. So I do also wonder who is would be using all the permit spaces. It might be coming from the apartment buildings on the east side of the park. Um, but I did want to, at least that's my observation, that it seems like if we reduce some of the uh, permit parking spots on the west side, I'm not sure who's parking there because the residential buildings that are there seem to have adequate off-street parking. So that's my comments. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so if there is no one else to speak at this hearing, um, I can call it closed, okay? Um, once, twice, thrice. Okay, so um, the hearing is closed at this time. Um, so I'm asking a question of, of um, do we now, are we now as a TSO committee allowed to discuss this and ask questions? Yes, I mean, sometimes uh, you start with questions from counselors and then Okay, um, right. Then you have discussion, and then okay. if you can Very make a decision, good. you make a decision. Okay. All right. So, uh, does, do any counselors have questions for um, our two experts here, Jennifer LaFountain and Guilford Mooring? And I could also say if they have comments, they can make comments. Okay. So, I see Shalini's hand raised. Go ahead, Shalini. Yeah, could we get uh, some sort of an idea uh, in response to the questions that came up? Who is utilizing those parking spaces? Is that possible to know? And secondly, I think we need to figure out as, t as a committee how we are working with TAC and you know when and how should they be informed and made part of this process? So those are the two questions for now. Jen, do you want to talk about the parking permits and what what is the parking permits and what does I mean? It might be just sort of a little background on that as well. Sure. So, <clears throat> I hope you guys can hear me okay. I got a little scratchy throat. I'm sorry. Oh. Um, so that section that is um, labeled for town center parking permit, it's for anyone that works or lives in the downtown. And I ran some numbers, and um, a lot of the I'm guessing a lot of the people that are parking there would be from the mixed use buildings at one East Pleasant, 57 East Pleasant. And then <clears throat> there's some also, there's also some town center resident parking for Halleck and McClellan and a little bit of triangle as well. Um, so I, I think that's the majority of the people trying to fight for those limited permit spaces that are there. Okay, um, and um, Anna. I apologize. I am feeling a little, a little lost, and so I'm hoping one of my fellow committee members can orient me. The proposed plan still in, does that still include making it one way in order? That's that's the only way you're going to accommodate. Okay, great. Thank you. That's what I thought. Just making sure I was looking at the right thing. Yeah. So the council already addressed that. So the yeah. question now is: now we've created this parking. How do you want to designate that parking? Is the question before the the TSO committee tonight? Thank you very much. I was lost in memo hell. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to lower my hand until I can uh, clarify further what I need to ask. Thank you. Okay, uh, Andy. Yeah, um, I think that the number of comments that were, were very helpful from uh, the public during the hearing process. And so I uh, wanted to pursue that a little bit because I think that what they were saying in essence, was that the most important thing that we can do is to assure that 
somebody who's coming to the park um, is driving to that area for the purpose of, of using the park and using the playground has the greatest chance of having a space available for them. Right. That's the value that we're after, and I actually believe it should be, then we would need to be thinking about issues of how many spaces need to be reserved for that use. What are the hours that people are bringing children to the park and need to have that availability um, in the Sunday I, hours, I understand to be an exceptional problem that we have to do. Right. And how long um, people stay at the uh, park, what kind of turnover is needed in the spaces that are available so that we can have the best chance of assuring that um, there's uh, an adequate number of um, spaces that are allotted for the purpose. And um, I don't know if there's any study that can be done. I can't for can't imagine how it could be done. Maybe uh, Jennifer or Guilford or uh, Paul have an idea of how you could make that kind of estimate. And if you could, that would be great. If you can't, then the question comes to my mind, um, depending upon, of course, cost, because it depends on if we're using meters or we're going to place a uh, payment box in that area. Uh, which is what, what is a feasible thing to do for enforcement purposes. But it would seem that um, the, uh, you, we might want to talk about also whether to go higher on the number of spaces. And if we go too high, you can always turn them back over to mm -hmm. permit parking as opposed to starting the other direction. So those are the issues that I've identified and wanted to just share with my colleagues on the committee. Thank you. Thank you, Andy. And Anika has her hand up. Uh, so Andy actually uh, asked my question, but, and just further, we've heard, um, you know, we heard community members speak both for and uh, against um, the back end parking. So I was just curious as to know how um, the reason for that decision. Okay, so I guess um, that would be to Guilford. Um, I've heard you on this topic. Um, would you like to speak to that? Why back end parking is particularly suitable to Kendrick Park? So back end parking is very suitable because of the low volume on the street. Once we make it one way, we've cut half the traffic out of the road. Um, originally, we laid it out as angle in parking, but as we were talking about that with the TS, uh, the TAC, and some other people, they were like, "Well, yeah, we like what you did on North Pleasant Street in front of the restaurants, and it would be safer if you could back into the park because, as was said earlier by one of the commenters." If you're in a minivan and you back into the space, you open the back of the minivan and you're on right. the sidewalk, you're not in the middle of the street. And if you're unloading your stroller, you unload it. If you open your doors, the doors kind of make a barrier for the children that can't run into the street if there's cars beside you. So it actually made a lot of sense. Um, at first we didn't want to like, at first we didn't think too much about it, but as people start making comments like that, we realized there's really a lot of safety issues and safety features with back end parking, although Amherst is is having a hard time adjusting to it, um, I say maybe we still have about ten percent of the population who are having an issue on North Pleasant Street. But this this road is only one way; you can only go one direction, so it yeah. makes it much easier for the back end parking and much safer for the park. Is the way we saw it, and we agree with the comments we got from the TAC about that. Okay. One other thing that's been pointed out with back end parking is it's safer for bikers when you pull out ah, your seat good. bikers instead of backing into the, the travel lane. Okay, so that's a very important point too. Um, I just want to um, add a comment to Andy's. Um, if you're in a car with small children telling them you're going to the park and you get there and you can't find a parking place, that is hell. Um, everybody starts crying and it's really a horrible thing. So. 
Um, I also thought he made a good point that if we overdo it, um, then we can make a change. Um, I just have to admit, I was, ex I was startled to see the change because we had 10 spaces for uh, metered parking before we had a playground. And now we have a playground and we have some additional handicapped spots, which I think is good, but we still have 10 places. So that we, I, I just feel that the balance is off. Um, uh, I, I am very interested in the comments about hours of usage of the park. And I think it would be good to find out more about it. Um, I, I've heard that um, people are there even when the weather's bad, when it's cold, except I guess when it's snowing. Um, I don't really know how late they're there. Um, I think that would be something that we would need to know before we set the hours um, on things. Um, Cause I think it's important. Um, if it turns out that they're there till it gets dark, then we would want to have the metered parking go later. Um, but again, I don't know if that causes a problem in terms of, of uh, enforcement, but uh, I think the rapid turnover of parking spaces available for people coming to the park with children is the number one thing that we have to be thinking about. So that's my two cents. I see Guilford. Oh, Paul's got his hand up, then Guilford. Okay. Yeah, so, so the council, I mean, the TSO committee can say we recommend a different mixture instead of, you know, the mm -hmm. seven, you can say we wanted to go to 12. And that's perfectly fine. That's, that's you should make that. And that's why the purpose of a public hearing is to listen to the public and then to bring your judgment to mm -hmm. what is needed. And so that, that we welcome that, whatever it is you decide on that. Thank you. Um, Guilford. Um, I just want to say two things. The, the first is, is there are people there using the park all the time. Um, okay. We've been out plowing snow at, in the evening and there's been families on the playground. <laughs> we have been out and it's been drizzly and there are kids on the playground. Mm -hmm. um, we, we have families who talk about going to Garcia's and walking across the street after dinner to go to the playground. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even, Great. Even, even when it's dark, there's enough light from the little lighting we put on the walkway mm -hmm. that families feel comfortable and they go there and use it. Um, so there are the intended users are there quite often mm -hmm. and they stay pretty late as long as, I mean, I've seen some on the weekends who stay, you know, nine or 10 o'clock. Um, and then we also have um, the children who are not designed for the playground who are there as well. Um, and fortunately, there's not been very many incidences of them damaging the playground. They've been very respectful. So mm -hmm you have people there pretty much all the time just about wow. um the that... second thing i wanted to say is is so what what you are going from is a space that is um unmarked parking for permits so if you actually laid spaces out you get between 17 to 20 spaces in there that's on the west side um and what you're gaining is a total of 33 spaces. If you look at the drawing, there's 33 new spaces being put on the east side. If you count the numbers there, um, three of those spaces are handicapped and mm -hmm. 30 are handicapped and regular people spaces since handicapped can park everywhere. Um, mm -hmm. so, so you're adding about, you're adding over 10, you're adding about 10 spaces even though you're marking the spaces now. So if you kind of want to reduce the number of permit spaces and have 20 uh, metered spaces, that, that, that increases, all, that gives you a lot of flexibility. Yeah. Um, and the way we're going with metering right now is these spaces will probably have a kiosk instead of okay. individual meters. Mm -hmm. So it, it'll be just a kiosk type system. Okay, good, thank you. Um, so it would actually make sense to have more metered spaces if you're going to the expense of the kiosk. Um, just throwing in, okay, Jennifer. I just wanna say too, with the key, having the kiosk there, it's a lot easier to track um, the usage 
where the post meters, okay. everything gets put together. So we would be able to track more efficiently with the kiosk. Thank you. That's very interesting. Okay, um, Anna. I'm curious if my fellow counselors or if Jennifer and Guilford have an idea of if the general consensus seems to be to increase the number of uh, pay of metered spaces and decrease the number of permit spaces. I, I'm curious to what, right? Like, and I'm trying to remember back to when we, like a couple of weeks ago had this discussion and I'm kicking myself for not having my notes in front of me for when we were just talking about parking permits, but I, I'm struggling to figure out what's the magic number. Um, and, and I'm curious if other folks feel resolved on that and, and would like mm -hmm. to share with me what they're feeling resolved about and why. Could I clarify on that? Um, I thought you were going to ask what the money difference to the town would be. Um, no, that's okay. a good question though. Yeah, I, you know, because I, I think that's an interesting question too. Well, oh. it's more about when we were talking about permit parking. You know, we talked about usage, right? And we talked about do we need more spots? Do we? We just right. added a couple streets in. Do we? Right? And so I don't want us to take away potential permit spots that would be necessary, especially given that we upped the potential number of permit holders. Um, and I am recognizing that more than 10 spots may be beneficial for metered parking at this location. So I'm just curious where we yeah. land okay. on that. Okay, if so Gilf Guilford and um, Jennifer, do you have answers to her questions? They may not, I, it, it's partly for them to answer, but it's also, I'm curious where other folks are at as well. So it wasn't necessarily directed specifically at. Well, you're you're looking for a magic number of how many permit spaces someone thinks we need? In my mind, it's magic, but I'm curious if my fellow counselors have a thought yeah. on this as well, on, okay. on that specific question. Okay. I'm with you uh, with this one, uh, and I'm trying to, uh, figure that out. I'm a little confused as to the number that we were at before and if we had just with um, the recommendations gone up or down. So um, I, I agree that it seems like we should be looking at perhaps do we need more, but um, yeah, looking for a bit more clarity myself. Okay, well, I will raise my hand and call upon myself. Um, Whatever the number is or is not, I don't want the park, parking around the park, the playground, to be where we make up if we have a deficit. Because the playground is very important. And I must say, Guilford's testimonial to the use of it was way beyond. I, I, people have commented that it was being well used. But I did not know in the rain, in the dark, in the snow, that it's being used. And I, I think that's a very exciting thing. I also liked a statement that somebody said that people from other parts of Amherst are coming to the park. I think that's very important because I've noticed that when we've had a lot of issues with the downtown, a lot of people don't don't come to the meetings. They don't because they don't care. They're really far enough away from it that it's not part. It's not of their interest. And I think it's very important for everybody in Amherst to relate to our downtown and to our center of town. And I think if the park helps do that. That's good. So it, it should be a positive experience, is, is what I'm saying. Um, okay, I see Anna. Oh, Anika, I can never see your hand because your background is the same color as the hand. But Anika, I call on you and then Anna. Yeah, so thank you. I'm, I'm not really thinking about necessarily what I want per se, but for this question, this would be for Paul. When you had suggested and you know, let us know, we know that we could recommend more spaces. Where, did you have an idea of where those spaces would be? Like, were they from the park or were they elsewhere? No, they were they were from the park. I mean, it's just a matter of where you draw the line between um, uh, permit parking and um, metered parking. And I think, you know, the other point that Jennifer mentioned, the, the um, kiosk parking is good because you can always, it makes it really easy to expand or, or contract your metered parking. It doesn't take extra, a lot of extra work to, Put posts in or anything like that yeah, yeah. so it gives you some flexibility there so um it sounds like what you're saying what the counselors are saying is that they want more metered parking than was recommended in the memo and um maybe um guilford could weigh in on looking at the map and what what that magic number might be um because i trust his judgment on this 
Um, yes, that would be great. Guilford, can you answer that? I can. Um, what I would recommend, if you look at your handout and the, the drawing at the bottom of the handout, there's seven sp there's seven spaces angled back in spaces towards uh, Triangle Street, and there's three parallel spaces. I would make those ten spaces your permit spaces, because that then put gives you all your other spaces centered around the, the playground, um, and mm -hmm. that that would just kind of I think fit the best um because we are trying to we are catering towards the playground groupies which is good um so that's how i would lay it out and then that also gives us a chance to see how those last spaces are being used because if we're just mm -hmm. those we can kind of watch them um i know this is not a topic you're talking about but you know one way to get rid of the overnight parking is to put the winter parking ban back into effect because um, mm -hmm. then everybody has to have a parking space and they don't leave their cars parked on the streets overnight. Um, but I know we're, we got away from that and we probably will never go back to it, but that is one of the consequences of removing the winter parking ban is that you're going to have people who are going to come when, the, when, when we're not enforcing and park overnight and then leave before enforcement starts the next morning, which is normal. It's a normal mm -hmm. thing. That's a very interesting thing to be pursued um, because I don't know why what's bad about the um, parking ban and why you think it won't be brought back. Um, I guess I'm just used to those things. Um, I don't think it's going to be brought back, but uh, okay. that's All right. okay. So I see Anna has her hand and then Andy. Uh, okay, great. So, so such thing as a like springtime parking ban, right, Gilbert? So, uh, the I, I just want to kind of cosign the the angled back in parking like as I look at what we're talking about right that angled back in parking and and increasing that number I'm I'm fully on board with I guess I think upping I'm curious I'm, I'm just going to put numbers out there like Guilford do you think that you're planning to up it to 15 spots that are metered or are you thinking up it by like two what I I apologize I'm trying to conceptualize when you say adjust, what does that mean typically when you talk about this type of decision? Um, well, as I, as I said, there's like, there's gonna be 30, 33 mark spaces here. Right. Three are handicapped. Yep. So if seven of them are metered, you have 23. I mean, if seven of those are permit, then you have 23 metered spaces. Oh it would be 10 permit though, right? I thought you said it was, yeah, it'd be 10. Oh, 10, yeah, it's, sorry. Okay, 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 okay. It's yeah. late, it's been a long day. No, you're fine, that's, I think I'm in the same place and so I, I apologize for, okay. for that. Um, I think yeah. that that does feel reasonable to me. Um, yeah, that feels reasonable, reasonable to me and I appreciate the effort to keep the, the metered spots closer to the playground end of things. Yeah, so thank you, um, Andy. Yeah, I, I guess a couple of things. One, I agree with the last bit of conversation that's been going on, so I don't want to spend much time at it. I would, as a general matter, um, always try and give priority to accommodating people using the park and expect that residents who are getting permits without guarantees of spaces uh, if they have to walk a little farther, so be it. Um, you know, it's not everybody can be right where they want to be. It's and I think that I think the kids, people coming with kids, get the priority in my mind. Um, and uh, I, the other thing is, is the the comment about um, having done away with the overnight parking. Uh, I guess I'm one of the uh, people who's responsible for that because I was done by the select board. So I, uh, I take, but I think that it was the right thing to do. We were getting a lot of concern from residents who, you know, like, um, need to park in close to where their residence is as possible. And if they were banned for substantial for months and months during the year 
from street parking when there was absolutely no reason to do so because there was no snow emergency requiring them to do so, um, that it was uh, causing them a great inconvenience that they couldn't see justified. We heard a lot of complaints. Um, you know, this was one of those things where you hear from constituents, as we all do now in the council, and then you act to it. And that's what was that's what happened. And um, I think it would be unwise, I don't say unlikely, because if, you know, the council can make a different decision than the select board made. But I would find it unwise because we do have the experience and I know what we'd be going back to, which is banning parking for weeks and weeks when there's no snow and there's no justification to do it and inconveniencing a lot of people for taking that step. And uh, we've now invested in the systems to enforce the new uh, new way of doing this with the uh, flashing lights and the notification systems. Mm -hmm. So I would urge you to think about it carefully before you change that. Okay. Um, I just want to comment on one thing Andy said, which I hadn't thought about. By not having as many permit places, we're not taking away necessarily permit spots. We're just taking them from that place and they would hopefully find a permit spot somewhere else. So that was a good point to bring up. Um, Paul. So as we're moving towards, it sounds like the, the committee is moving towards a decision. So it seems like what you are settling on is that the 10 spaces that are being created be reserved for permits. And those are the ones that are mm -hmm. three parallel spaces in the seven back end spaces that are farthest north, Guilford, is it on the plan? Yes. The remainder would be um, designated as, as um, metered parking. So if you are all in agreement on that, then the next question for you is, what is the, how much do you want to charge for those and what's the time duration for them in the hours of, of enforcement? So maybe that's the next piece of they have so you can get to a, a, a vote on a meet, on a motion. So you're saying, we're talking about how much to charge at the meter. At the, at the present motion, I believe it said 50 cents an hour. Correct. And it had a limit of four hours yep. and it had an end time of- Eight to six. Eight to 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Okay. Which is what most of our meters in this area are. Is that right, Jen? Okay. And 50. I believe cents. so, yes. Okay. So he has laid out those times. We're now going to comment on them. Anna. Yeah, I think keeping it as consistent with the surrounding area makes a lot of sense. The only change I could see is limiting it to two hours, but I don't feel strongly enough to fight for that. So um, mm -hmm. for, I, I think, for me, the biggest thing is not making it confusing, you know, so that people aren't mm -hmm. trying to have to shift their minds about about everything. I guess I thought most places were two hours, and so that's my only question mark on there. Oh, okay. So, Paul. So I just want to ask Jen. I think Jen or Guilford would know why we why that was put in as four hours to begin with down there because it's four hours now, I believe. Do you know Jen or Guilford? I'm not that, sure. This this. Sorry, Jen. Oh, go ahead. I'm not sure, so go ahead. <laughs> um, a while back, I mean, back when we first started talking about some parking, there was, you could park longer out here because it's farther away from the center of town. They were trying to get more turnover in the center of town. And they mm -hmm. wanted to encourage people who worked in businesses who had downtown permits to park farther away and give them longer to park so they didn't have to feed a meter or walk so much to move cars. So that's kind of why it was, this area was a, a longer stay time. Um, uh, Annika, I see your hand up. Uh, so, and as um, I know that uh, resident Ken Rosenthal had pointed out that he usually has his two hour frame, um, you know, four hours could also just you know, encourage people if you have two hours of play, you know, there's also time to explore, eat at the restaurants, picnics, so it would encourage more time, you know, for lingering right there, especially with the kids. Okay. That's I agree a, with you alone. You're saying four hours allows you to play and eat. Okay. Or yeah, shop. It allows for more, whatever it is, it just allows for a little more time after the kids play. Okay. Um, any comments on that from anybody? Um, I, I'm not going to 
I was for two hours, but now that we have increased the number of metered spots, um, it's, I think that I think that we're going to get a, a good balance. That's my feeling now. And just, you know, and I do agree that Anna has a good point about trying to keep things as consistent as possible. So it's just as to lay, decrease the amount of confusion people have. Okay, Anna, your hand is up. All right. So the only other thing I, I will throw out maybe in support of the two hour mark is that you had said um, you're most likely going to be putting in a kiosk instead of um, literal meters in this space. Mm -hmm. And because people can adjust that with their phone and things like that, I not everyone does. I know that. But um, it seems like it's more accessible to quote unquote feed the meter when it's a kiosk than um, than it might be for a literal meter. So I might I might maybe push for the two hours a little bit stronger than I had before because I think when the four hour limit was put in play, or, or like Guilford said, it was when that part of town maybe wasn't as uh, as happening. And so now that there are things that people would like to be doing down there, does it make sense to drop it to two so that there is that turnover? Um, and I think, you know, like the, like the residents said, they're typically there for an hour, maybe two. Um, yeah. So I keep saying, I'm not going to fight strongly either way, but I, I kind of, I do see the argument for two hours. Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, Shalini. Um, I'm just thinking like, this is a focal point for parents and kids and maybe senior citizens bringing their grandkids and so making it as convenient and easy for them. Uh, and, and I think the four hour does make it more convenient to them. So I would lean on the side of making it easier. And of course, if they do leave in two hours, it's an That's empty right. spot. Right. Yeah, it's still empty. Yeah. So it's not like it's blocked for four hours. So there will still be that space, but just let's make it easier for people who are going to be using the Kendrick Park. I mean, yeah, Kendrick Park. So I would favor for. Uh, I, I think that's a good point, Shalini, um, that if somebody uses two hours, they use two hours, the, then the meter is open to other people. If, as Anika said, they want to add on a meal, they can stay for four. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. I also had a you got, anything, you got some more things to say, Shalini. Yeah. Yeah, I just had a question if, we want to send it to TAC and do we have the time? Like uh, I, I wanna know from, understand from Guilford uh, with respect to this particular item, do we have any flexibility and time to get feedback from, um, from TAC? And then we can discuss later perhaps, and I don't know if that needs to be an agenda item then, mm -hmm. how we're, yeah, I think that would have to be an agenda item if we were talking about generally, could we just standardize the process that anything that involves um, the roads, it automatically goes to TAC so that the TSO gets feedback from DAC, DAC mm -hmm. and TAC yes. always when it's issues related to or something like that. But that would be a different agenda item, I can imagine. So right now it's just for this particular item. Do we have the time and do we, I mean, mm -hmm. to get feedback from them? Right. So, um, Guilford, that I mean, I can ask you to answer that, and and I do remember that uh, Tracy Zappian in the hearing said, "Okay, we know you can't do all these changes yet, but can you make the road one way, and can you change the parking from the west side, west side to the east side? Can that happen right away?" So I guess it's what can happen now, and Shalini is asking, um, "Do we have time to refer it to TAC now?" The, the the tax next meeting is on the 19th mm -hmm. so that's their next meeting um every every just about everything on the plan now is based on earlier comments from the TAC and the DAC I like calling it the DAC that's nice um and um if you want to start implementing this it is. It could be possible to just move the permanent parking over to the east side and leave it permanent parking until we make the changes. Um, and you could make it one way relatively easily. But putting the angled parking in and um, requires us to take out the uh, grass belt on the west side to make everything fit. So putting in the angled parking would is part of the bigger pro bigger project. 
Right. Okay. So I didn't totally understand part of that. Um, if we're not going to do be able to increase the amount of metered parking right away, and the permit parking is going to move over to the west side, but not the back angle. And how many spaces are available for metered parking or just empty spaces for people who want to go to the playground while, until in this interim before we get the full project done? I think that's a really important question. So if you, if you just use parallel parking on the whole east side of North Pleasant Street, yeah, um, you, you could probably fit 20, 20 spaces in there. And if you don't mark those spaces, people tend to park closer together. They just like to be close to closer when there's no markings. Um, so it'd be about 20 spaces. Um, if you want to meter part of that, um, and I guess technically we could meter part of it. Um, you would just have to say which parts you want to meter. But the problem with making the, yeah, that's the angle in parking is the only thing we can't do, right? We cannot right do, meter. okay. Are, there are some meters there right now though, aren't there? Those meters are between McClellan and, um, McClellan and Pros North Prospect. No, Halleck, between McClellan and Halleck. Oh, and we're okay. not proposing a change there. Okay, all right. There's only right. seven meters there. Okay, all right. So back to you, Shalini. Yeah, I think one of the points that was uh, raised in the public comments was around uh, traffic calming. So and that was another reason I was thinking if either go for it. Um, you can come up with and propose or maybe giving it to TAC, they may be able to offer uh, some suggestions for traffic calming. They could. Um, the issue we're facing, if we had the money now, we'd go build what, you, what you're approving now. Mm -hmm. The issue is, is we're not sure we have the money to put this in. It wasn't kind of programmed in any, any of the construction for this year. Um, so you, TAC, yes, TAC will come up with all types of traffic calming. They're very good at that. They come up with some really cool stuff. Um, but the, the money to put it in is not, we don't know if it's there yet or not. I mean, this actually may, we're not looking to start building, building this this year, but it actually may get built towards the end of the construction season in October, November, if money holds out. We still have money, a little money is, seems to be floating in. So between now and October, what would the parking situation be on the park? Uh, I would, it could stay the way it is now, or if you want to say temporarily move it, move the permit parking to the, um, to the east side of the road, um, we could possibly take one of the kiosks we have from another parking lot and put out here and make it permit parking if you'd like. Now metered parking, you mean? Yeah, mirrored parking, Mirrored. sorry. Okay. All right, so if we could get the parking on the east side and um, have a certain amount of metered parking so people could use the playground in this interim period, um, that would be, I think, meeting some of the suggestions from the public hearing and from this committee. Um, Andy, I see your hand is up. Yeah, I just wanted to point out um, that Kim Trombley, who's a member of TAC and testified during the public hearing, has had her hand up. And I don't know how you would feel about um, recognizing a little bit of public comment and seeing uh, what Kim wanted to offer. Um, thank you, Andy. I, I think that's a very good idea. Uh, I think we're having a good discussion, and um, I think that would be helpful. So. If that's all right, I would like to call upon uh, Kimberly Tremblay, please. Thanks so much. Um, I really appreciate the comments and it's very thoughtful. And um, and especially to me, I live, you know, I'm a TAC member, but I also like literally bike there every day. And yeah. um, changing the parking to the um, park side is really important to me for, my own safety, personally for my own safety, but also for all the people who um, are, are walking and or biking along that street. 
um, because of the sight lines, um, the sight line issue. So, mm -hmm. um, and secondly, um, if we could make that street one way earlier, I think that mm -hmm. now, which doesn't change too much, it's maybe some signs, it's a lot of effort um, on people changing their habits, but it will make it a lot safer for mm -hmm. um, the people who are at the park. Um, and um, it, yeah, so that's all I wanna say. And I thank you all for considering these things. Okay. Thank you. So um, I'm bef I, I, there's another hand that's raised, but uh, I just want to clarify, uh, Guilford, you're saying that um, even without the money to do the, re the reconfiguring of the tree line and the uh, back end parking, you could um, move, make the street one way and move the parking to the east and borrow a kiosk and have some kind of temporary solution until you're able to do the beautiful plan that you have. Is that correct what I've said uh, yes the the only the most expensive part of that whole plan you just talked about is moving the kiosk okay but it, moving the parking to the east and making it one way that could be done okay yes Great. but please please keep in mind you are going to get some complaints because you mm -hmm. The road will be wide because you have parallel parking. Um, you'll have a little faster speed still, even though it's one way. Okay. You'll you still may get some complaints about it, but it would move the parking closer to the park. Okay. Okay. Right. But you know, it's easy to take complaints if you have a good answer for them. And I think we've had a lot of good answers today. Um, so, um, um, uh, I guess we have Tracy, uh, can we have a brief public comment, please? Hi, so I just, I really appreciate you having a public comment during your discussion. Um, I agree with the comments that Kim just made. I feel very similarly, like I do think it is a safety issue with having the parking on the west side of the park. Um, and I think particularly, you know, in terms of the time frame, right? I mean, once the students are leaving town and UMass commencement is next week, um, yeah. there is a lot less pressure to use those permit spaces. I mean, typically, I know Kim lives mm -hmm. in that neighborhood, but I'm in that neighborhood a lot too. And we see very little use of those permit spaces when the students aren't in town. And so I think if there is a possibility of making some of these more minor traffic calming mm -hmm. changes and safety changes, by the time the students return or in the fall, that that would be a huge improvement. And um, and I don't really, I mean, I feel like TAC, I mean, Kim is on TAC and I'm on TAC and I don't feel like it necessarily needs to go to TAC because I feel like you've already heard our comments that we've made as like private citizens. So um, thank you. Thank you. Um, I always appreciate it when people say things that are common sense that have not occurred to me, such as, the UMass is nearly over. I mean, you know, and um, we could do those things and it's a calmer time. Um, I do think that was an interesting point that Guilford made, however, that a wider street without the back in parking means that the traffic still might want to move fast. So um, do you have suggestions on, on uh, is there signage or speed limits or maybe a sign, um, go slow park or children at play signs? Um, because we will have children crossing the street. We could just put potholes in. <laughs> I know that's your favorite suggestion. Yes. And you don't have to do much because nature's cooperating with you. Yes. Okay. All right. But that, you could put a, a children playing sign. We could put signage. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, um, Shalini, your hand is raised. Yeah, just the uh, traffic calming. We were talking in a district meeting, and we said those uh, the, the 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 thing that shows your speed. You know, the sign that says you're driving at thirty or forty or whatever. Uh, that is generally very effective because people feel, or at least I feel, that there's a camera and I'm being watched, and I should slow yeah. down when I see my speed is like forty. You know, kids area or yeah. something, and that I've heard is more. Um, when I'm getting late for meetings, but yeah. which I always am, but 
I think that I've heard, I think it was Gilford who said, like, when you have the children's signs, uh, slow down, and we even have handmade signs, which are very, like, endearing, and, you know, the kids talking to you, hey, please slow, slow down, we play here. Those apparently work initially, but then people get immune to them. But mm -hmm. the traffic sign, I mean, the speed yeah. sign might be mm -hmm. more effective um, if you put something like that. Response, Gilford? Um, we can look into it. Okay. But I think those speed signs, which I also find very effective, are more expensive. Yeah. Um, yeah. It works on my block. It's not that I think so I'm on camera. It's that I just needed to be reminded what speed I was going because I wasn't thinking about it at all. I was only thinking about where I was going. So I, I really do like them. They help me a lot. Uh, Anna. I, I guess the, the traffic calming is stuck in my head too. And, and I know Shalini and I did hear a lot at our district meeting about this specific stretch of road. And I think, you know, the, um, the, the speed indicator signs would be great. I know that sometimes this, this road is a little bit tough because people would slow down to make the corner and then pick up right by the playground to like jet through. Um, and so my concern is now if we have people stopping to then back into the spot, right? Maybe that's a natural traffic calmer in and of itself. Um, is yeah. that that you might have a car perpendicular to you in the road? But um, I guess in general, what would be helpful to know is when we ask for things like traffic calming measures, rough cost estimates would be helpful for us in terms of being reasonable mm -hmm. with what we ask for, right? So. Um, when we just say like, oh yeah, just put a speed bump in and we have no idea how much that costs right. or if that's like, can ever be taken out or whatever, right? All of those things. Um, this is more kind of a general thing, Guilford, just cause you know, you're stuck with me for at least, at least another year on TSO. It would be really helpful for, for me at least to know in order to manage my own expectations, right. um, rough, rough cost estimates for those things and general opinion of effectiveness and that I can get from you and also TAC, but um, yeah, that would be helpful. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna say that I'd like to entertain a, a motion um, is, or am I out of order on that? I never know when we're supposed to make a vote. It's a good time to make the motion. If you're good, yeah. Okay, and um, I call upon my friends on the committee to come up with a motion. I'll do it if I have to, but... Um, um, Oh, I have started. I've started working on a motion. I haven't quite Thank finished you. it, but it, what I had started writing was: I move the uh, TSL committee recommend to the council that interim steps be taken as soon as possible, okay. including um, making uh, North Pleasant one way Wait. northbound from Halleck Street to Triangle Street moving parking spaces to the east side of North Pleasant and um, uh, Andy, isn't McClellan Street, not Halleck Street? I think yeah. that the proposal that had been before the committee and it had been previously voted was from McClellan to Triangle. McClellan uh, is McClellan. McClellan. Yeah, okay. Uh, so, we need to change and, that word from McClellan to triangle. Okay. Yeah, you're right. Uh, be on the east side of the street. And uh, that uh, 10 spaces near the park be um, for metered parking. I thought we had talked about 20 spaces metered. Um, and I, I, I that that is how many people remember it being 20 spaces metered? Yeah, it was the uh, Andy, I flipped it too in my head. It's it's 10 permit spaces, yeah. 20 uh metered metered spaces mm -hmm. to be dedicated and to then, then, then uh with 20 spaces metered um with two hour limit and I don't know. I mean, I think we would need to have this discussion yet because I don't think it's completed, but at eight o'clock, um, um, extending to eight o'clock, though, I think that 
I can come up with good arguments as to why it could be six o'clock too. Okay, so this is we've got uh, we have a motion and then we discussed the motion. We, sorry, could we repeat? But I have to be seconded in full because we discussed it part way through and I got lost. And we and we don't have a second yet. Okay. Yeah. Can we repeat yeah. the motion? Thank, thank you, Andy, for working on this. It's yeah, got some helpful. moving parts, you know. Yeah, it's, it's, I think where we're at is uh, something like a move that uh, TSO committee recommend to the council that interim steps be taken as soon as possible, including implementing one-way northbound traffic from um, McClellan Street to Triangle Street, um, moving parking to the east side of North Pleasant and preserving 20 spaces, I think we're at now, um, for metered parking. Um, you know, is it metered? I'm gonna say right now, but this is, should be discussed, metered two hour parking mm -hmm. until 8 p.m. And uh, there are two things in there still, two hours and until 8 p.m. I think we would, that may need discussion, but at least if the motion gets it out on the table. Okay. Do we need to add the handicapped accessible parking spots in that motion? I probably yes. Okay. So we'll say the two or three. Well, 20, 20 spaces, three handicapped. So may I make a suggestion to your motion? Yes, please. I think maybe you could just reference the plan that already has this on it. And then you can say all the map, all the all the parking spaces on the plan are shown. This is for the few, there's two different things you're doing. One is like the permanent change when we get the money to do it. Right. And that's, and you're saying uh, designate the 10 spaces, the seven back in and the three parallel for, for resident parking, all others will be metered, right? That's and then, then I think the second piece that that Andy was referencing was like, and let's move, let's let's do the interim stuff that we when we right now as soon as we can, whenever it's feasible, because it does take some time mm -hmm. to do and to get a, a kiosk and things, um, make it one way, and just relocate parking across the street, you know, uh, to the east side the of side. the street. Right. So, okay. But I think you you it's sort of two different things. One is what is the permanent change you want to make. Right. And one other thing, if I can have, take, I have the mic here. Um, it's important for us when we allocate uh, um, the hours and things like that, that we try to be consistent with other areas so that our parking enforcement officers aren't running around town saying, oh, this lot is eight o'clock and right next door at six o'clock. Um, mm -hmm. So just we're, be some consistency in our parking plan. Okay, so are you saying to take the motion that we have, except we're going to swap flip some spaces the um seven spaces which are now in the written plan written as um metered will become permit in the permanent plan and the 20 spaces that are listed as permit will be metered but that we keep the other things then we have you're suggesting strongly that we don't do not say 8 p.m. because that would cause an inconsistency, which might be difficult for the enforcement. But the plan as presented has four hour limit and Andy wants us to discuss the two hour limit. Um, so in terms of, of doing that, we could let's let's OK, this is I see the moving pen. OK. Uh, Twitter for handicap seven I'm, back. I'm just trying to get these all into the same. Into That's the great. Same That's thing. great. So, so I, I think yeah. I have Andy's whole thing and we're changing this to 6 p.m. And then there's also the recommendation. How do, um, does somebody have words about how to phrase this um, after the permanent changes are made with the, on the other side of the street? Um, I mean, you could just reference the, the plan, the North Pleasant Street on street parking concept plan created by the DPW. One way northbound traffic with Clown Street triangles of parking, the east side of North Pleasant, and the 20 spaces near the parking being metered parking to our limit from 8 a.m. with three of those spaces. Okay. Okay. 
okay, and to recommend it. Right, so we start off with the interim steps that can be taken now. And we then lay out the plan, which is as to what percentage of parking is, is what kind of parking is the same in the temporary plan and the permanent plan. Well, okay, except that the back end ones that won't happen will be for permit, that's okay. Do we say where the permit parking is going to be in the temporary plan? I think it, it, it already exists, correct? Is that right, Gilford? Yeah, that's right. It's, they, they're maintaining the permit parking at the north end of the park. Is that, does that, is that clear enough there in our temporary plan? And then later they will be in a, a different thing. Um, Okay, so now we have a parking. Is it to six five p.m. or six p.m.? Um, permit, permit parking is five p.m. The permit All parking, permit parking is five p.m. Meters until six. I see. Okay. Well, that's kind of challenging. So, yeah. Six is what's aligned right in, with the rest of the town, right, Paul? Because the other document said eight. I just wanted to confirm. Yeah, I think it's six o'clock, isn't it, Jen? Do we need to put anything about a parking kiosk? Nope. Nope. You designate the spaces and what the conditions are. We take care of implementing it. Okay. All right. I will happily second this motion. Okay, Andy made the motion, seconded by Anna. Okay. Um, then we have, do we have any more discussion on this motion? Oh, Shalini, your hand is there. Yeah. Okay, so it is four hours then, right? I'm just sorry, I was checking. Well, Andy hour. had said two hours. <laughs> what does it say here? Four hours? I don't. Four hours. Okay. Here it so says that's two hours right here. Is it? Two? Wait, I'm so confused. Andy's Andy's said two, um, but the recommendation was for four hours for the meter. Ah. So that's why it's looking... different in these oh, two. Sorry. Things. Right. Right. I was looking at the map, parking map downtown, and in those areas, it seems it's four hours right now. So that would be more consistent too, right? Just keep it as four hours. Mm. I'm fine with making it four hours. I what I also said was is that I thought identified it as one of the issues that I thought the committee needed to make sure that it was comfortable mm -hmm. with the answer. Yeah. Okay, um, Shalini, do you have more comments? Your hand is still up. Okay, so again, I'm just confirming because Paul said it should be consistent with the surrounding parking. So is, is go for it. Do you feel comfortable with the 4R? Is that what it, at least the map shows it's 4R in that area, but is that what the surrounding oh, yeah. area is? That's a good okay. question. I'm here to I'm comfortable with either one because we can always come back and change it if we need to. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, Anika. I was just going to say that we, um, you know, whether it's two or four, as long as you know there's and it's easy to adjust by you know phone going forward. That um, you know it it can still be just as convenient as long as people do not have to like come back to their. Yeah. Yep, yeah, so, so you can't feed the meter. That's against the rules, right? The technically. Yeah, I, I want to say that having thought through the four and two hours that I'm happy with four because somebody who's finished playing in two hours will leave and the parking, uh, the metered space will be available for anyone coming in. Um, you can't, I don't see four hours. It's pretty hard to totally misuse a four hours window. You can't, you, ha you have to leave after four hours unless it's, Ah, unless it's near the end of the meter time. And that part I never understand. Whereas if you park at um, two o'clock and the meter is over at, or three o'clock and the meter is over at five, then somebody could theoretically park there all night. But I, I guess that's just the way it goes. Um, Anna. 
only the only reason why I'm stuck on the not doing four is these parking spots are also great places to park and then go do work at a coffee shop or something. And so that would be a potential four hour use. I think that's a perfectly valid use, but I think that these parking spots would be, um, they're close to share, they're close to, right? And so these parking spots could be taken by folks who are gonna go study downtown. Again, that's a totally valid use of a parking spot and I'm fine with it. However, I just wanna be realistic that I don't think that, the four hour use is okay. always just going to only end up being two hour parking. Right. So, so I think okay. it's just aware that yes, someone can mm -hmm. leave before four hours, but someone also could park their car there for four hours and take up those spots. So just as long as we're comfortable with that, that's, that's that. Well, okay. Then the part, the part I'm thinking of is um, I'm playing with my kids and they don't want to go, but there's another parking place. I just move my, where my car is, or do I just go move where, what I tell the kiosk? I mean, yeah, I think we're a little in the weeds, right? So like, yeah. I think that at some point it, it is yeah. what it is. So um, okay. I'm comfortable with four. It seems like the more flexible option um, as long as we aren't going to get complaints about spots never freeing up or turning over. Well, um, then yeah, I want I want to vote on the two and four. I really, I don't, I don't feel that we've totally gotten there. And I have, I, I think we should at least take a straw poll on the two hour and the four hour. There have been a lot of good arguments raised on both sides. Okay. Um, now, do I have to do that by keeping the motion as it is? It's written right now with two hour. It might Read be that. easier, Dorothy, if you just ask us for a general okay. feelings on it okay. instead of doing an actual poll. Okay, so let's let's do it a straw poll then. Okay, uh, Andy. Yes, I would. Um go with two hours is a preference, but it's not as it's not strongly felt. I can be convinced. Okay, Shalini. Four hours also because it's consistent with the rest of the area yeah. around there is four hours and that's what the recommendation came from. Okay, uh, Anika. I'm really fine either way. Um, I, I would go for if if we are already set at four hours, I would say leave it. If we're adjusting and we run into problems, then two. I'm really I'm fine either way. Okay. Um Anna. Uh I'm I'm it's pretty much exactly the same as Andy. I was leaning towards two just because I didn't think the playground would get usage more than two hours at a time, uh, given kids' attention spans, but um, if four hours is what people would prefer to be consistent, I'm fine with that. Well, uh, I'm going to vote for two hours now. Um, my question is, is it easier to change from two to four or from four to two? Or does it not matter? It, it, like, you can, you, it doesn't matter which way you go. You just have to go through the public hearing process again. Okay. okay. So then I would, that makes three people, we're, we're, we, we all can live with it, okay? We, nobody's gonna have a fit either way, but it's now three people for the two and two people for the four. So that means the motion would stay as written with the two hour. Um, everybody knowing that things can be adjusted. Okay, so can I call the question? Just to be clear with Athena, the second part of the motion should be consistent then, right? Where it said four, it should be two. Okay. You got it. Yes. Got it. So the 20 back in parking spaces for metered parking at 50 cents an hour with a two hour parking limit. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, all right. So I, that pad just ran out. <laughs> okay. I'm all set. Um, so call the question and um, I will, um, Andy, um, do you approve this motion? Yes. Okay. Second. And Shalini. Did we second it? Mm -hmm. yeah, earlier. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yes. Okay. Uh, Anna. Yes. And Anika. Yes. And Dorothy. Yes. Okay. Great. So um, I think we've done a lot of good work. Okay. Now um, we can go and deal with the sewer plan. Um, 
it's Thank actually Jennifer. sewer and water. Um, Thank you, Jen. Oh, oh, oh. Thank you, you I never meant to do that. Um, Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. So, and Guilford's going to stay for this. So, my understanding is that we're talking about the issues that are not to do with fees, which means that we're talking about um, the issue of who owns the line, the water line or the sewer line. Um, and I thought, I think I reread some of my minutes, uh, or maybe it was actually the official minutes. Um, that said that we were going to get some kind of um, information, further information on this. Um, and um, is that is there further information that you have to offer us, um, Guilford? No. Okay. Uh, I don't um, know what other information. I thought we were just going to continue going through. Oh, I know what it was. Uh, Lynn had uh, asked for a array of different ways that we could uh, have some kind of outreach public forums to get people involved on this. I remember that was what, there was a brief memo from email from Lynn, um, but we can handle that ourselves, okay? Um, we also have to do the regulations themselves. And we are one of the things that uh, Andy had mentioned and that Anna is aware of is the, um, some of the wording from Bob Hegner. Um, so, um, Anna, you are the lead person on this issue. Um, we could get started, or can we have a five minute break? Is that a possibility? Anna, do you have a question? That yeah, can I, can I just raise the question? Then maybe we can take the break, and then Guilford can maybe get some time to look up the answers if he has it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think those uh, answers can be found in five minutes. However, there were two things we had asked for. One was the insurance, if the town does uh, the insurance, what that might cost, mm -hmm. and also what would be the cost to the, if we were to take on the right. cost mm -hmm. of uh, fixing, if the town was to pay for mm -hmm. the meter yep. repair, then how would that impact the right. cost? Right, and I had wanted to ask, we, our rates are lower than many of our surrounding towns. We had lists, but I don't, can't find them now, of different towns that connected, covered different parts. And so my question is, could, is it possible that some of the higher rates that some towns have are connected to the fact that they take ownership of more of the piping? Um, because there is a connection between how much you do and the rates you charge. Okay. Um, Andy, you've got your hand up. Yeah, I just wanted to point out, of course, that uh, uh, looking at the Finance Committee report, which is in your uh, packet for this meeting, right. uh, does uh, address some of the questions based upon information that Amy and Guilford uh, provided to the Finance Committee. And uh, so it's worth uh, taking a look if we're going to take a few minute break at that. Yes. Right, because that there were definite how much it would increase the cost. I do remember seeing that. Um, okay, so um, can we take our five minutes break now? It is eight o'clock on the dot. See you all in um, five minutes. Okay, great.
It's five minutes after eight and time to open up your pictures and turn and join us again. Hmm. Okay, and welcome, Amy. We're getting into it now. Okay, am I okay. good to go? Yeah, good to go. Okay, so I want to just be conscious of time. Um, we're scheduled to end at 8.30 today. And so uh, I we can do one of three, we can do maybe one of three things. So the way I see it, is that we need to discuss the public engagement element. We need to, um, which to give context to Guilford and Amy, there have been a lot of calls to really include the public a little bit more in this discussion. I'm thinking about how to do that thoughtfully uh, and, and as part of TSO. The second part is to discuss that those bigger picture questions of insurance and ownership. And the third is to really get into the regs. What I'm gonna pitch is that we start with the second thing. We start with those big picture questions. Um, if that's something you both are prepared for today, because I know it's, we asked you for that information last time. Uh, and then if we have time to talk about the public engagement component, that'd be great. But just don't think it's realistic to say we would get to all three and get through the regs mm -hmm. tonight in the next 23 minutes. Um, does that sound, how does that sound to folks? Paul, you have something to? You're muted, Paul. So so, I mean, you've asked Amy and Rick, uh, Amy and Guilford to be here, so I would take advantage of their time since they've taken time out of their evening to be here. So yeah. whatever's most productive for their time, I think the public engagement is a separate topic. And I can talk, mm -hmm. I can talk to, I'm, it, um, I can tell you about the insurance piece of it. Um, mm -hmm. So, and that's, that's on my plate. The other things are. Oh, um, okay. Yeah. I thought that was on their plate. So great. So then, then it would make most sense to dive right back into the, the actual regs themselves. Is that what you're saying, Paul? Well, we, we, okay, could, we, could, we could talk about the cost, the impact of the of the, yep. own, of the service line ownership if you want to. Um, we, we do get confused sometimes because we talk different things in different committees. Um, in the with the finance committee, we did prepare, prepare a memo for them that actually answered that question. Um, if we take over ownership of the service lines, we would be shooting to go through a repair and replacement schedule of replacing those lines in the sewer and the water um, about 100 to, two of them, 100 to two of them a year. So if you do 100 and you replace the water line from the road or from the water main to the property line of the road, we're averaging around 8,000, 12,000, um, I might not have that number right, but overall in a year doing a hundred of them, it's around $220,000. Yep. I was going to say the memo said 220,000 to 250,000 per year. That we'd add per year. And then when we do rate setting, we use for every hundred thousand dollars we add to the budget is roughly 10 cents to the rate. And that's a rather, it's that really, ha we really haven't updated that number um, in a year or two. It might be a little higher now, but it's a pretty mm -hmm. good number. So you're adding, if we take over service lines from the main to the property line, we're probably adding around 20 to 25 cents per unit to the water rate. And then if we go and we do all the way from the water, water main, to the house, um, we're looking at a much bigger cost and that's around adding about $2 million to the budget every year to do a hundred lines a year. So that's $2 mm -hmm. and 20 cents we'd be adding to the rate per hundred cubic feet. Paul, you have your hand up. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I was just gonna mention that um, this is all written in the finance committee's it report is. that you have in your packet. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Uh, Dor oh, go ahead, Guilford. No. Okay. Dorothy. Um, I would like to, for the uh, simplicity, to limit this discussion to 
to the property line and not to consider to the house, because I think um, that is varies tremendously from how many where the house is placed and could add just absolutely unfair distribution of costs to the town. Um, but I understand that psychologically, uh, feeling that the street is like not yours, uh, even though it's your line going down to the main, um, is very kind of hard to grasp. So I would say either we keep our policy as it is or change it to the property line. Thank you, Dorothy. Um, I will raise my hand and say, I feel very strongly that we not keep it as it is. And I also agree with you that we not go to the house. I think going to the property line is absolutely the right move in this in this situation. Um, and, and Guilford, I apologize if I missed this. Do you have an idea of the average increase per, um, I'm trying to I'm trying to translate right in my head of if it if it changes if it increases by twenty to twenty five cents do you have an app, an understanding of the average increase that folks would see on their bill? Actually, Amy's better at that one. You Amy, that one? Thank you. Yeah, I mean twenty. Let's say twenty cents per unit in an average house in Amherst is anywhere from. If you're a conservative water user, you maybe use sixty units a year, and if you're a average water user, then you use about um, 95 to 100 units a year. Um, so someone else can do the math, but those are the numbers. So 100 units by, or you know, 60 units by um, 20 cents, 20, 25 cents per unit. Is somebody doing that math there as I'm saying it? <laughs> so they can say a number. Uh, I was doing it, but I don't think I did it right. $12. Right? And it's 100 units, it's $20. Yeah. So it would go up by $20 a year for the average user. Yeah. But it has the potential to save them from incidents like we've heard our residents be in where it's 18,000. And that would cover the cost on the town to do this. That, that's what we're estimating. Um, when, okay. we, when we start doing this, we'll be able to get better numbers. Um, and hopefully also we choose the correct service lines to replace and we don't have any additional ones that pop up. I mean, we may, we may choose one area to do all the service lines and then we get 50 breaks or, or we get a bunch of breaks that are someplace else. Um, so. Yeah, thank you. Amy? I, I was just gonna add that, you know, we're talking about, just to be clear, it's 20 to 25 cents on the water rate and, and then, then another 25 cents on the sewer rate. So yes. when you're talking about the increased costs, understand that mm. double it. You know, double. unless you guys decide that we want to have ownership rules in one no, no, no. that no. don't, you know, that aren't equal on the other. So double it for people who are that. on sewer. For people that are on sewer, yes. Yeah. Paul. And just then I'll get yeah. yeah, just a clarification. When you talk about the 18,000 repair. I don't know how much of that was in the public way and how much of that was I, in the private I way. Yeah, I okay. do understand. Thank so. you. Yeah, we heard from a couple other residents who their repairs were all in the in the thousands. Um, and so I have it stuck in my head that they're not exactly cheap to do. Um, so I apologize for using a, an anecdote as an example. But thank you for that. Uh, Guilford, you know that you're... Actually, yeah, I just also want to remind you, um, we have different types of, uh, we have different types of rate payers. We have single family home rate payers, we have multifamily homes, we have apartment complexes, we have businesses, and we have institutions, mostly institutions of higher learning. Um, but there are other institutions like churches and those things. So the, the other question, when you decide you're going to say the town will repair the service line to the property line, is does that include all those as well? Um, and we can look at that, but I don't, I think almost all, all, everybody, I think that would be doable with if we just go to the property line. If we don't, if we go all the way to the property, the building itself, that causes a whole bunch of other problems. But if we just no, go I, to the property line or to a distant, um, to a, a point where we say this is for apartments or this is for um, institutions, that would be, that would have to be set to. Mm -hmm. I just confused it and I apologize. No, you didn't. Shalini? Yeah, I'm just looking at the table that we were given for the water 
uh, rates and then uh, so Amherst average 92 HCF per year. I don't know what that means, but I'm just looking at the comparison of Amherst with Belchertown and Northampton, which are the other two towns that do pay with the town pays for the water breaks. And we are way lower in these relatively speaking to these towns so we are like 427 and belcher town is 736 and northampton is 621 of course i don't know what 92 hcf per yeah amy knows me. yeah <laughs> i could just tell you so eight eight h so we we measure your water in units of hundreds of cubic feet and so that's wow. what that is which okay. I understand it's confusing because a lot of us understand gallons a lot easier, but mm -hmm. cubic feet is what our meters are in. Gotcha. Okay. And so for every hundred cubic. So it's, it's kind of like hundred. So yeah, so we would be adding $20, let's say even, um, you know, and then we still lower than the neighbor mm -hmm. rates. So I just wanted to share that table. Thank you, Dorothy? Uh, one of the reasons that I want to do this is because I believe Guilford said that um, Many of the pipes are old and there's are a lot of them that are gonna to have to be replaced. And so that says just suggests, oh, that's gonna cost the town a lot of money. But the fact is there's gonna be a lot of increasing numbers of people having this problem and getting extremely upset. And I, I think we just have to bite the bullet and say the town's gonna to be responsible from the property line and will charge, increase its rates and as, as Shalini's saying, get more in line with other places um, because this is gonna be something that's gonna be happening more often. Um, I forget the name of the horrible type of pipe that was in front of my house, but it's like fiberboard or- um, Orangeburg. Say it again. Orangeburg. Orangeburg, yeah. It's like, what is it made of? It's made up of tar and, uh, tar and paper rolled yeah. together into a tight pipe and it eventually gets waterlogged and falls apart, right. falls apart. And there's That's a lot for of- That's sewer people. You're not drinking water out of Orangeburg for what's Right, okay. But a lot <laughs> of people, <laughs> a yes. lot of people have those pipes from their house. It was very popular and very cheap at some point and they're all gonna fail, okay? So there's a, a big job ahead and I think we might as well just do it, uh, but you know, not go bankrupt while doing it, okay? Thank you, Dorothy. You're welcome. Andy? So my question, because uh, this was not one that we asked clearly during finance committee, but um, the, I understand that the pipes vary in size for larger institutions than most homeowners are of a single size of single family homes. But when you get into larger institutions, is there a bigger cost of absorbing this expense for larger users mm -hmm. if you if you set the if we set the demarcation point at the property line or at a meter that we already use as the point of transfer where they have ownership past the meter and we are at the meter um, we have several groups that have meter pits and that's where we set the ownership line is once the water goes into the meter pit and leaves the meter pit it's theirs and once it on, our, on the other side it's ours um, it wouldn't make much of a difference if that's what you keep as the rule. Um, and actually to tell the truth, my personal view is bigger pipe is easier to work with than the small service pipes for the mm -hmm. houses. It's just, um, I think it's easier to work with. Um, the guys may differ with me on that comment, but they do it more than I do. So that might be one reason why they like it. May say that. Mm-hmm. Donnie, did you have your hand up? Yeah, I was just going to say the one other thing that I heard from residents downtown, especially was with the trees and the roots that are there. And so those are town owned trees whose roots are then interfering with the pipes. And so it seems fair, again, from that point of view that um, that the town take on the cost of these problems because some of them are paying every year or every other two or three years they do the flushing of this and i don't know if that was sewer or that was water i think it was the sewer maybe you're talking sewer yeah yeah yes. that was sewer where they have to clean up their pipes because the roots go into them so 
just so you know, if you say for sure we're only doing to the property line, the problem you just described will not go away for them. Right, right, right. The, uh, the tree, if you think about a large tree, a large tree uh -huh. could have a canopy, which is you know anywhere from 50 to 70 foot in diameter. Mm. So those roots go out that far. So if the tree is in the tree belt on the side of the road, there's probably a good 25 feet of roots going wow. into their property. And those roots are going to go into the old clay pipes and old Orangeburg pipes that are used mm. for the sewer line because that's where all the good food is. The water and nutrients for the tree are in there and they, wow. they're going to want that and they'll go there. So that's you're only taking care of the problem for the sure. property owner to the property line. He's still going to, mm. they are still going to have that problem. Mm. Okay. Um, can I just, I mean, this is more for later, but I think when we do the community engagement, this is what the information we'll be sharing with people is that this is, we can, the town, if it takes on the cost, then this is the increase in the water rates. And then we haven't heard from Paul, which we can hear after later on about the insurance, because those will be the different right. alternatives you're presenting. So, oh, Andy, go ahead. Yeah, I guess one other thing, because uh, Shalini used the term the town will pay, and I think that we ought to be very careful about using that terminology, because it really is um, a question of, do we charge, um, th does the homeowner who is the repair need pay, or is it spread over all rate payers? It's the rate payers, not the town, because this is an enterprise fund. Right. Yes, everyone up in High Point would not be joining you and paying for this because they have no water, they have no sewer. Mm -hmm. okay. <clears throat> Thank you for that clarification, Andy. Um, Dorothy. Um, so, um, just to, clip, to tie into what Shalini was saying, the insurance that Paul is going to talk about, that would cover from the persons on their own property, right? So the tree roots that we're talking about that might be breaking up the pipes that are on your property, which the town will not replace, if you had that insurance, it would cover that. Is that, that correct? Okay. So that would be a good package. The town will be taking up more ownership of some of the pipes, but the individual homeowner would have the opportunity of, of um, having some kind of help and protection for what they're in charge of. Okay, thank you. I'm raising my head. So Dorothy, to clarify, you are saying do both the town ownership to the property line and the insurance for anything yes. on the literal property of the homeowner. Right, particularly after Guilford's comments that the tree, uh, we want our trees, we love our trees, they have roots, and they're going to spread both in the town part and in the private part. And we need protection from both. Um, I have to think about that one. Any other, uh, any other questions on this specific area? So Andy, in reading through, um, it didn't seem, did, did finance come to a recommendation regarding this specific, I apologize if I missed it, but did finance come to a recommendation or a leaning on the choices between of where the ownership line is? No, and I didn't it. press them to make a recommendation because I felt like our responsibility was to try and understand the financial consequences, but that the policy questions really belonged more to TSO. That feels fair. Thank you. Okay, so in terms of moving forward, um, I have another, I do have another question that came from a committee member on finance that I would like to pose, but I, before it's, it's separate from this particular issue. Um, and so is there anything else that folks would like to, to raise, not last chance, but trying to be in little boxes? Yes, Dorothy. Um, I'm still hoping to hear Paul's report on what this insurance would be like. Okay, Paul, would you like to do that now? Sure. 
So um, this is a insurance uh, salesperson who th they offer a service. Uh, they can offer the service to our community. They have one other community in Massachusetts that they insure, and that's West Springfield. Um, what they offer is, first off, they say that 98% of the claims that come in are under $8,500. So that's sort of, that's so they've established that that's how much, that's the most they will pay for a claim. And to get that coverage is that for water, you pay $5.75 $5 a month um, for that insurance. And for sewer, it's $7.75 per month. There's no deductible uh, in either of these. And they will cover up to $8,500 per incident to cover this. Um, you know, it's 100% voluntary. There's no minimum re participation requirement. What they do is they come in, they get the information, all the customers in the town, they mark, they mark it to them, they send a mailer and, um, you know, they say the town's offering, you know, we're offering this through the, the town and then people can sign up for the service or not. So if they have a water main break or a, a water break from their service or a sewer break to their service um, and they're paying this monthly fee, then they, they will cover that. So. Um. You said 575 and 775. 575 for water, 775 for sewer. So 69 is $93 per year. If you've done the math, yes. Look, I couldn't do this 25 cents, but I could do that. So. Yeah, that's, that's good. Um, any comments or questions for Paul or for the three lovely town folks about um, how these play together? Anika. So I'm not sure if you'd be able to answer this question. And so, um, so if you're covered, you have up to $8,500 and that, is that for each? Like if you had water, you have 85 and sewer, you have another 85. Yes. Is there, is there any ballpark on like, just kind of like average repair? Like, is this, is this $8,500 seen as like sufficient more than, more than enough? Um, yeah. So what they said was that 98% of the repairs come in under $8,500. Oh, you did say that, 90, 98%. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Um, I'm struggling to see a downside to this and I'm, I naturally am really critical of insurance. And so I'm curious, Paul, in your mind, you know, because it's opt-in, um, because it's, covers a, a decently high amount for for many people $160 a year um what is the downside I mean does the town spend money what's the cost well, other than no to the individual yeah there's no downside actually the town could yeah. make a little bit of money off it they pay you 50 cents for every customer who signs up the what I don't I mean things I I don't like necessarily is using the town sort of um, endorsement of a product to right. property owners um but if this provides, opens up a market that property owners can't access otherwise, then it's a worthwhile thing. The way they market is that they, again, they get, they have a standard mailer. They send everybody saying, you know, the town of Amherst has endorsed this product. Would you like to sign up for it? It's, it's you know, whatever the pricing is. And it's, you know, they, they don't, it's not a heavy, they don't do phone calls. They don't do heavy marketing. They don't go door to door or anything mm -hmm. like that. It's just through mailers. Um, and then, and they do that. I think they say they do it two or three times a year. And then a follow up on that. You said a few other towns have been using this same company. Have you spoken to any of the um, folks in right. those towns right. about their experience? So only one other town in Massachusetts, and that's West oh. Springfield. I have not that's connected right. with that person who, who did it for that community at this point in time. Okay. Uh, Anika. I'm assuming with, is this their basic plan? So for instance, for some of, of the residents that have had have called and um, lately, so it's Mrs. Federman, like that, that have these massive bills. Um, are there options with this company that for us, this is a, a really reasonable rate that, um, you know, residents, when they get all this information, do they have their plans for like much higher coverage reasonable? Would you, do you know that? They didn't, I don't know that. They didn't offer that. They just basically have this standard plan that they market to cities and towns. Okay. Dorothy? I can ask that um, question though. So um, Ms. Fetterman's bill was large because a lot of it was went beyond her property line. All right, so that's number one. 
Uh, number two, my cost was much big because I had a huge stretch of street. I had to go all the way down to the corner of Sunset to meet the main. And that would not be, I would not have had to pay that if we had the new policy that we're talking about of having the town own the, the lines up to the property limit. Um, my policy was better, but I got it when we bought the house. So when other people heard about this and tried to get a policy, they found that having already gotten their house or their mortgage, they weren't able to get it. So there are better plans that one can get if you get it when you buy your house. But an awful lot of people, that's not a possibility for them. So to me, I would say, yes, my bills are much higher, but I had to cover a much larger area. This would be, I think, a very useful plan once the town, if in fact it does take over ownership of the pipes to the property line. Uh, some of the things that you have to uh, do, uh, we had to replace the whole sidewalk. But again, that was because it was a long, long line that we were in charge of. Um, we wouldn't have to do that. I guess the town would have to replace the sidewalk um, under this new thing. Um, so I, I would say that the, although there's better that people can get, some people can get under certain circumstances, this would be really helpful to a lot of people under our new policy. So I would, I would suggest that we do it. Thank you, Dorothy. Uh, Shalini, some last comments, and then we're going to try to wrap this up for tonight. Yeah, I was just going to ask if we need Amy and Guilford here and be respectful of oh, that. I was thinking of the same yeah. thing. Um, we're actually at our time as well. So um, what I'd like to do before Amy and Guilford leave us is just to give folks a quick outline of the plan moving forward. Um, I don't know, Dorothy makes the agendas. I have just been given this, this part to run with. So um, what would be very helpful to my fellow committee members is if you could read through those water and sewer regs, if you have any comments specifically on the regs to make them um, in a Word document that we are able to go through in our next, that the next time we discuss this, because we do really need to go through those line by line. So um, if you could be prepared with those, that would be fabulous. Um, and then in terms of our decision-making process, uh, Paul, when we're, when we're making a recommendation regarding the ownership of the property line and as well as insurance, is that something that needs to be written? Well, part of it will be written into the regs, but is that a separate um, kind of item or is that something yep. that's, that we bake into the regs and go from there? The property line is what that's a key piece of your regulations that will be in the yeah. regulations and then if it, it, then you want to know when that takes effect because that will inf impact the the uh, the okay. dpw budget and the rates that you set because you haven't set the rates yet so that would have to be done uh the insurance isn't a town council decision we can offer that or not and i would right. welcome okay. whatever guidance you offer i would you know welcome that okay thank you okay great so next time we do this please be prepared to um, start going through line by line. We'll start with water. We'll, we'll finish water and then go into sewer. So if you um, want to tackle one at a time, I, I as try as I might, I don't think we'll get through both in one meeting. Paul, did you have something else? To add? I just want to budget time for that so that, you know, I know it, it takes time out of people's schedules to So if you're going to say, let's do it, whichever date, just allow an hour at least to maybe you get through as much of it as you can. I agree. That would be, that would be great. Oh, Sh Shalani, sorry. Yeah. I thought it was a lot. Yeah, no, no. Yeah. Uh, could we also ask them to invite uh, to look at the comments? There's a whole list of comments from the finance committee. Yeah. So I added those in um, for our go through when we go when we go. I took the I took Rob's okay. edits and put it in the document. Okay. Um, and with the comments, so we will be ready for those next time as well. Um, but I can send them right. to that to folks in advance as well. I, I that may have already been done, um, but I'll confirm. Guilford. Mm -hmm. Do you do you want us to take those comments and start going through them now and have give you, send you an updated draft? If that's okay, that would be great. Um, I know I can send you my own Mandy Joe's and um, Rob's if that's helpful to you. Um, unless you'd like to discuss them line by line. I, I think it might be helpful for you, for you if we kind of knock out some of the ones that are easy to answer. I mean. You're, you're reading what two people who live this life every day read and write and tell people. And you're a group of people who read it differently and see it differently. So none of your comments are bad. We, and then some of them are very good in pointing out where we're just stuck in our hole and we need to come out and talk to other people. You can absolutely tell me if we have bad comments, but um, that would be incredibly helpful. I didn't think we were allowed to do that. So that would be phenomenal if it's something we can do. 
um, happily we'll send you all of our all of our edits and comments. And so can I just cinch that up? So what you're going to do is you're going to have a a, a marked up copy yep. with track changes on it. Yep. You're going to send it to Guilford and Amy. Yep. They're going to do additional mark changes on it yep. and then send it back to you. Yeah. Good. Perfect. So here's what I'll commit. So here's my, my I don't want to break the law today question. Can, can committee members individually send me track change documents that I will compile so that we don't send... Amy and Guilford, five individual documents with potentially the same comments. Is that if they're individually sending them only to me and I compile them and do not reply back, that's okay, right? Yeah, that's yeah, that's okay as long as you don't share them again with the committee. Won't do that. Okay. So action, new action plan, final action plan. Please go through this water regs and sewer regs. It, as a Word document, which I believe you all have. If you do not, I will send it to you. And do a track changes with any comments or questions. I already do have the ones from Rob and Mandy Jo. Send them to me by next week. I will compile them. Guilford and Amy, is a week long enough for you to look through them or, or get through what you get through in a week? Is that... I think we get, we'll start with the water ones and we'll get through what we get through in a week. Deal. Okay. Okay. I, I have to, we have our next meeting agenda. Some of it is already settled. Um, we have the senior center services and we had invited Rosemary Koffler. We have the CPOs coming and making a presentation on outreach. Um, we can, we have three other items we can move to another meeting, speed limits, roll of tack, uh, and um, town and gown relations. Those are right. other ones. Those can be put off. But I think we need to do the senior center and the outreach. Can, um, can you and I connect on the agenda? Because I do want to let Amy and Guilford go. So okay. Amy and Guilford, we'll get you water first, then Stewart. They may be split up. I'll combine them into one word doc with track changes and send it to you. I had your... wanted some, I'd wanted some response from um, Guilford, whether whether he had a timing issue. That's why I brought it up. I, I now while they're still here. Okay. So if I if we had our preference, we would have you go ahead and do your agenda you have set and do the water the next meeting if you don't mind. So the second of June is that our next meeting? It would be the first meeting in June, right? Yeah. Okay. So you so that'd be that's better even for us then. It gives us a little more time to get it to you. Great. Um, yes. So Dorothy, let's, if you and I can connect then about okay. that um, and spacing it out um, and great. So Dorothy will confirm that, but tentatively we'll get it. Uh, we'll talk to you again in the first meeting in June. Let's um, then, how about this? If folks can have the drafts to me by the next, um, ideally by before the next TSO meeting, on the 19th and then it won't take me i don't think too long to combine them i'll get them to to mm -hmm. amy and guilford they'll have two weeks shalini no, i was just saying bye to amy and okay guilford. yeah so if that sounds good i i, I wanted to confirm it with yeah. them one more time so th but thank yeah. you shalini so um if that sounds good to everybody guilford and amy thank you so much for for being here and and talking thank with you. us you're welcome thank you thank you, thank you. Yeah. all right um, Dorothy, back to you. Okay. Um, just taking a look at our agenda. Um, do we need? I did to have, have a comment. Comment yeah, we, about the last yeah. topic. Do we need to have some public comment now? Um, yes, I think we do. Um, okay, because I, I look. I think Shalini wanted to say something about sewer well, okay. and water. Yeah. Before yeah. that, are we right. doing any kind of discussion at all about the water? Uh, I mean, the community engagement piece. I think one thing that we were hearing is just for the town staff to maybe put it on the bill uh, on the bulletin board. Like how even just these meetings where we're discussing these items when they come up. Somehow, is there a way to other than us sending it in our newsletters and? Do we send it to all the district counselors and let them know? Can you share this information that the next in June we're going to be discussing this and or are we discussing this at all? So we could put it, we could let sorry, sorry, I, I don't know if I still have the mic or not, Dorothy. Um oh, you do, you do go we ahead. We could make sure that it's in the TSO report to tell the other counselors about um and ask them to share out. 
Um, and then I think the other discussion from my perspective, Shalini, was whether we wanted to denote a special um, public dialogue about water and sewer um, at, at a TSO meeting. I think that was, that was the, for me, that was the question that we needed to answer um, going beyond mm -hmm. just a public comment. Mm -hmm. uh, so what it, would you call that? That, that was it's what, called I mean, the public really dialogue. Okay, and have we have we discussed? Unless Athena tells me that Athena. it's called something differently right we now. We have rules for a public dialogue. <laughs> we do, Athena. Athena what's your yes. great? What's I, your take? I think the rules indicate that um, council committees can have public hearings and public dialogue sessions apply to the council only. The council. <laughs> so um, you could call it a hearing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we could have a hearing on this. Okay. Um, <laughs> And I think it was very important. The TSO report will stress this. Okay, uh, Shalini. I think the other thing that uh, residents were also asking for is uh, education of, if you just say it's a public hearing, then people are like, oh, blah. But it's like, if we, like, part of this is people don't know that this is how it affects them and uh, if this breaks down. And so I think part of the, this, uh, the, the public engagement was to educate people about that this is a thing that could affect you and so what even to get people to the public hearing the education part is part of it so can we share it in the bulletin board or amos bulletin which is free i believe Um, sure. I mean, I think if you want to just to say what you what you plan on doing, we can share that information out. I'm not really clear what you're if you're doing a hearing or just having a discussion at your June meeting or not. So once you define what you're doing, we uh -huh. can help promote that. Yeah, We're we going can to be just... having a vote. TSO is going to be voting. Mm -hmm. And we had a very clear understanding. We had a motion and voted today mm -hmm. uh, about making a major change, which people would be very happy to hear about. Um, that we had suggested to have the town own the lines up to the property line, and that the town manager had suggested that the town independently could offer an additional insurance that would go from the property line to the house. Um, I'm not sure what, what decision are we asking the town to um, come in on? So that, that's, I'm not sure what additional we need, um, Anna. So well, I'm a little stuck on how we can call it a hearing because the hearing requires a presentation. It requires, and so, I mean, we could, we could call, like, if we call it a hearing, um, what is being presented? Because we are going through and messing with all these regs. And so I, I'm, I'm stuck on how to do, and, and the, Purpose, as I understand it, Shalini, from what you were saying, was really to engage in conversation um, with folks, or maybe it's not. Maybe it's just to voice opinion. But um, I think I want to be aware that we're putting something in that is going to get us what we would like. Um, and then the only other thing is, is Dorothy, I, I do think that most people on TSO are on board with that plan, but I want to be mindful that we have not made an, a recommendation yet, one way or another. Oh, so in other words, Tina has a hand. I thought it was. I thought that our motion included recommended town council. We haven't made a motion, is what I'm saying. So, like, we can't say like TSO wants us to change the the um, the ownership up to the property. We haven't decided that. I thought and we did. So, yet. okay, maybe I'm, mm. I'm. I'm. Am I in another meeting? I I wrote down that we had a vote, and that we unanimously approved the motion. No, uh, uh, for for sewer wrecks, no. For ownership, for town ownership of the line, no, oh, no, that just came up today. But we did adopt some water rates and stuff in a previous town council meeting. Mm. We did not vote on that. That's part of not the on this. Yeah, Athena has a hand up though. Yeah, mm -hmm. Athena, speak, please. Athena. You don't have to. You don't have to call it a hearing. You could just have special comment period, you could have a, a regular meeting with a special comment period and um, ask for residents input about proposed regulations. Um, you could talk about what the committee is considering and then just look for feedback. So you, you don't have to call it a hearing. I was just um, pointing out that that's, that's the only kind of those, one of those things mm -hmm. that are in the rules that the committees do. 
Thank you for clarifying. Mm. Yeah, I would, I would just say like one last thing about what is the purpose of this is just that people don't know that this thing can happen in their house and then they would end up paying this much money. And so what we are now considering and proposing, which hopefully many people will agree that this is a much better solution, but we still need to get people's feedback that the water rates will go up because we are incurring that, as Andy pointed out, it's not the town, it's the, the okay. taxpayers that are going to be paying a higher rate. So we need to give them that information along with the possibility of insurance. So just getting different people, like just from the Kendrick Park today, we heard so many different perspectives that I had no idea. So I think it's really important to let people know that this is what the impacts will be. And that's the presentation. Okay, so our meeting was supposed to end 15 minutes ago and I would like to first apologize for it running over, but it sounds like what we would like to do is have a special public comment period at our meeting on the second when Guilford and Amy are here where the public can weigh in and we would like it to be posted on the town bulletin board announced to counselors at our next meeting. And was there something else? Um, could you call it a Q&A? I don't know if we can guarantee the A end of that, but we could uh, offer, I mean, I, I don't know if it's a, a question and answer as much as it's an opportunity to come speak, it, to engage, right? Mm -hmm. um, Paul? So I think that's what you just said, Anna. We can certainly do, you know, the TSO is going to be talking about water and sewer regulations. It's going to be at this time on this date. Uh, public comment will, special public comment period will be in, encouraged. The question I have for the count, for the committee is whether you want, that you're going to be looking for a presentation of some sort to sort of kick off the discussion. I think it would be good. I mean, the presentation is the different options that are present and how it impacts people. Like right now, this is how it is and this is how it's impacting you. So you're talking and just about the the only thing you're really talking about is where mm -hmm. does the maintenance of the line, does it go to, does a town move mm -hmm. to the property line or to the homeowners or does it maintain current mm -hmm. status? So that's really the thing you want to talk about? I think so. At least from my side, that's the important okay. thing. Dorothy, is this my meeting or your meeting? Sorry, I, I don't know who's supposed to call on. Yeah, no, I, I, you're totally right. It's yours right now. It's still yours. Okay, Anika. Yeah. Oh, no, so, um, all right, so correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that in some of the, well, we had in the packet there was suggesting, uh, suggested comments that also pointed out how, you know, some of the language and, um, you know, in terms of where like property line, I know that's that could be very specific, but that it could be helpful to have a visual or you know some sort of um, diagram with that you know for folks right. and That's and in terms point. of some of the the language use technical terms that you know mm -hmm. everyone may not be familiar with so that could be you know, helpful um, to include with that I know um, those suggestions are spelled out in detail with the packet I believe Andy mm -hmm. have them added in. Okay. Lonnie? Sorry, there were other quest comments from uh, the finance committee, which was uh, pertaining to payments. Like, which, does it have to be quarterly? And what if people can't pay? Can they pay it monthly? So I don't know. I'm just discussing. Like, you asked the question, what is the breadth of this discussion? And I'm just thinking maybe one way to do it is just related to the costs, the fees, and then the costs of fixing things. I don't know. I don't know. Mm -hmm. The well, most comments we separate discussion, right? That's true. So the, I think the most comments we were getting from people were asking about the fixing and stuff. So I I'm happy with just keeping it focused mm -hmm. on that. The special okay. comments. That sounds good then. Um, Dorothy. Yeah, I was going to say I don't. We have a lot of stuff that we have to do yet on these regulations, and I don't see them as be, needing to be part of a extended public process. I think that uh, Shalini is saying that the question of the ownership, who, what, how far is it private? How far is it town ownership or rate payers ownership and how right. that relates to the rates and what the town has to do. I think that would be a, of interest. Okay, uh, but, so how about, how about this? That sounds good. I think we have a rough sketch of a plan. Paul, do you think that 
um, that would be something to, that Amy and Guilford would want to prep a presentation for, or is that something that I should prep a presentation for? No, I, th I think that would be Amy and Guilford. Um, Great. I think that's, you're recommending a major policy change. And so I yeah. think that's worth having presented to the council, helping you understand it, helping the public understand it. I think that you should keep on your agenda that night. That might be a relatively short discussion, actually. I mean, because mm -hmm. you, I think you seem to already have consensus to keep, have some ample time. So, um, you know, Amy and Guilford can go through the water regs as they hope to be able to do. So they, can, you know, we ask them, to, you know, they're here at 7 a.m. or 6.45 a.m. and then to be at a council meeting at night, yeah. I try to really try to protect them as best we can and utilize their time successfully. Absolutely. Okay, that sounds good. So um, Dorothy, you and I can connect on that agenda. Yes, Andy. Okay. Great. Yeah, just real quick that I wanted to point out that during the discussion at the Finance Committee meeting, um, when Bob Hegner um, summarized his comments, which were really then reflected a lot in the paragraphs that were included in the Finance Committee report, um, Amy in particular and Guilford both um, said that uh, they really appreciated the comments and um, that they had, uh, you know, would, would immediately start giving some thought to how they might propose to modify the um, proposed regulations mm -hmm. to address some of the issues that he raised, some they had thought about a little bit, not dealt with, and some they hadn't thought about. Um, so, you know, I think it's worth um, keeping just a, um, in a flow of conversation to make sure that, you know, we're aware of what they're doing and thinking already and not confusing it. Yeah. Okay. I think I've got an action plan. Um, is everyone clear on what we're doing? Everyone's going to send me their marked up word doc. Does everyone know how to do track changes in Word? Okay, good. Just confirming. Um, if you don't, call me and I'll help you. So, um, all right. So everyone's going to send me their marked up water regs and sewer regs by our next TSO meeting. That's your homework. Yes. I am done, Dorothy. Can okay, we, uh, I, so I hope that there's not much left on this agenda. Um, there isn't. We have to um, approve the minutes. Um, public. Are we gonna, oh, we have another public comment time. We have some people who've been waiting. So I do think we should do that. Um, and we will uh, do it. Uh, we will, given the hour, we will be a strict um, watching of the time. And Athena, can you put the clock up? No, minutes. I'm sorry. I can't. Dorothy, I can time. <laughs> yeah. I have, okay. I can, I'll time. Okay. Great, thank you so much. Okay, so public comment period is here. Does anyone want to speak of the few attendees who have hung in this long? Um, this is your chance to say what you want to say. Um, I'm not seeing the hands go up, but sometimes people have a hard time getting them, finding out where, finding out where they are. Okay, going once, going twice, going three times. Okay, so um, our earlier- The hand comment. did come up. Oh, I don't. There, it just. Oh, it there. Just, okay, great. Okay. I see it. I see it. Great. Okay, um, and the pictures here too, which other people are just don't know how to do that. Okay, Elsie Fetterman, would you please come in and give your uh, address, please? Elsie Fetterman, one forty-eight Log Town Road. I had an idea that you could have an insert in the Amherst Bulletin. Uh, a one pager uh, that people could uh, just check off uh, that about the option about the insurance, and also um, you uh, if I Guilford has when Guilford's asked about his opinion, he always said it's up to the community to make the decision, and mm -hmm. my I'm looking at the definition of community being more than council or the, the fact that I'm, that I got the Zoom and I, I'm on tonight is to have a questionnaire in the insert of the Amherst Bulletin, a one pager, not a big deal. I mean, I fill these out at the senior center all the time. I fill out questionnaires and surveys, a one pager. Uh, we have an option of insurance. We're discussing uh, that right now, the policy is that you pay wherever your connection is. It makes no difference. Now, if we have a choice, then 
these are your options. Pay right up to your meter, pay to the property line, uh, pay wherever your connection is. You can get insurance and whatever that in insurance is, the $5.75 a month. But I'm concerned that we in, have ownership of people in the community. I, I contacted five other communities and they pay, most of them pay right up to the meter, none of them, even DOT. So I, I'm very concerned about the outreach and we take our water and sewer for granted. I'm very grateful for it. It's not a hot issue like the library or the school. And I think we need, really need, we really need to involve the community. And I think this, I think uh, Scott could do a, a, a nice story to accompany it and a little thing about please fill out the survey. Uh, I would appreciate that. I'd feel that we are involving the community. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, so we will discuss this um, further unless somebody wants to make a comment now, but we don't necessarily have to comment on public comment, as Lynn would say. Um, okay. Um, we have the approval of the minutes of April 21st, 2022. Um, anyone have any corrections or additions that they found uh, they wanted to add to the minutes? Okay, then do I have a motion to accept the minutes as uh, written? I have to accept the minutes of 4-21-2022. Second. Okay. Very good, thank you. And I'll call the question, uh, Andy? Yes. Uh, Dorothy, yes. Anika? Yes. Uh, Anna? Yes. And Shalini? Yes. Okay, so we have approved the minutes. Um, next agenda preview. Um, we had it very briefly, but I'll just do it, I'll take a minute on that. Um, so the next meeting is pretty much, uh, it's the Senior Center and Services. It is outreach and the presentation by the CPOs, and we can then take up this issue that was presented to us in public comment um, and talk about all the different ways of outreach and what we want to do. Um, do we? Do you think that we would have time to discuss um, speed limits or the role of TAC or town and gap? Those were three other topics that were kind of listed at that time. I, I'm going to ask any who are interested, and I'm going to ask Paul if he has some thoughts on that. Yeah, I, th I think uh, you would. You won't. I think those two topics will cover that meeting. And I think when you want to talk about speed limits, you're going to want Guilford here, and possibly you put it on when you're talking about water and sewer rates on that meeting in June. Great. Okay. Speed with water and sewer. Okay, any other comments from anybody? Okay, so we have senior services and we have the CPOs and the whole question of outreach. And to remind you that Anna has given us a task, task that we have to read the sewer and water regulations, make our comments in track changes. And send them only to me at my amherstma.gov email. Right, okay. Um, I don't have um, oh, um, any items unanticipated. I have none. Um, Paul, are you going to have any um, appointments for us for next meeting? Yes, thank you for remembering that, Dorothy. Yes, I, I expect I have some for next meeting. Um, but also I want to inform you that in terms of a DEI director, I will have an appointment. Um, for that position, but that will probably need to go straight to the council because that's remember the D, the department heads have a very narrow 14 day response period. And in order to do this, and I, I was trying to get it everything lined up for your meeting tonight, but it just didn't, we didn't finish everything that we needed to get finished with this person. So once we're nearing completion on that, and as soon as I get that, so you would expect an appointment for the DEI director early next week. And then that will, I will ask Lynn to put that on the agenda for the May 16th uh, council meeting directly. Thank you for explaining that to us. That's, that's helpful. Okay, uh, does anyone have any comment or question that they want to ask or make before we adjourn? I'd like to make a motion. Certainly, I entertain a motion. All right, I move to adjourn the TSA meeting at nine o'clock p.m. on May 5th. Oh, great, we're very proud. And a second to that motion. 
Okay, and so we're gonna vote now, Shalini. Do we need to vote on that? Okay, yes. I don't remember voting we need to on, vote on it. I sometimes I ask myself that question every yeah. single. Athena, do we need to vote on adjourning a meeting? You can declare the meeting adjourned. Okay. All right. And I feel when I ask you these things, I feel like I'm saying, Siri, please tell me where I am. Where am I going? <laughs> All right. Okay. Right. Have a good night, everyone. Good night. Thanks, everybody. Good night.